The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild was first shown at E3 2014, with a final release of March 2017. That's a nearly three year wait, and that doesn't include all the tech demos, rumours and interviews we had about the game starting way back in 2011. As a celebration of the annual Zelda month, I'll be looking back at the build up to the release of the biggest Zelda game and biggest Nintendo game to date, and in my opinion, one of the best games ever made. Ladies and gentlemen, all aboard the hype train for The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild, which was initially known as Zelda Wii U, first came into the public's mind back at E3 2011. Nintendo showcased its then next system, the Wii U, and what appeared to be a fully HD remake or sequel of Twilight Princess. Fans and critics went crazy over this tech demo, and the thought of a hyper-realistic, high-definition Zelda became a hot topic. Jump forward a year to E3 2012, where the Wii U was shown in full, but sadly, with no new Zelda game to speak of. The Wii U itself launched in the November of that year, but with no new info on the new Zelda. It wasn't until the first Nintendo Direct of 2013 that we heard anything else. Hello. On 23rd of January 2013, a special message from E.G. Onuma spoke about how Zelda Wii U would break the conventions of the previous games. There'd be no more dungeons in a certain order, the game would be getting back to the basics of Zelda, and most interestingly, about some sort of multiplayer. Sadly, there was no multiplayer ever in the final game, but the other two points definitely hold true to the final game. In this Direct, we were also shown Wind Waker HD for the Wii U. Due to the positive reaction from the Wii U tech demo for Twilight Princess, the developers started testing previous art styles in HD. These were experiments into what art style would be used in Zelda Wii U. This turned out to be very to the point, as the final art style is somewhere between Wind Waker and Twilight Princess. Things went quiet after this. The occasional interview with Sagira Miyamoto or Eiji Onuma reiterated what had already been discussed. Development on Zelda Link Between Worlds for the 3DS was in full swing for a release on 22nd of November 2013, so I imagine focus was more catered towards that. At E3 2013, Wind Waker HD was shown in full, but we still heard nothing more on Zelda Wii U. It was revealed later in the year that Shigeru Miyamoto did want to show Breath of the Wild at this E3, but it was delayed due to the fact they thought the game wasn't ready for public showing. A few days after this E3, an interview from Eurogamer with Eiji Onuma gave us some very minor details from behind the scenes about the approach to art style and that DLC was being considered. In the same interview, Eiji Onuma also mentioned Skyrim, and the internet was ablaze with ideas of how Zelda Wii U could be inspired by it. Years later, in January 2017, Onuma revealed that Skyrim's sense of exploration was what helped inspire Zelda Wii U's exploration. A quote from him states, What really got me more into Skyrim is when you walk and you enter a new city, there is a real shock. Ah, there's a new city here. I wanted to duplicate it in The Legend of Zelda, albeit in a slightly different way. Things went quiet again until October 2013, where an interview with Mashable revealed that the development team had heard the complaints regarding Skyward Sword's small world, and that the new game would be aiming for a large, open world. After this, we basically heard nothing again on the new Zelda right up until E3 2014. Not my problem. Where we were shown the first footage of the game and given some real details. Eiji Onuma revealed that the first Zelda game was a key source of inspiration for this new Zelda. He stated that with the transition to 3D, the feeling of being in a vast, open world became harder to make possible. Wind Waker was trying to make a large open world again, but due to hardware limitations, the team had to make smaller islands in order to make the game work. This made the open world feel disconnected, according to Onuma. Another key point Anuma made in this video is that he wanted to get rid of the idea of a defined entrance and exit to each area. Then, with a snap of his fingers, the new Zelda was revealed. He explained the idea that the puzzle aspect starts as soon as the player decides where they want to go, and how this seamless open world could be tackled from any direction. We were then shown some action of Link being chased by what we now know as a Guardian. 
and given a optimistic release year of 2015? After this reveal, discussions began on how Link wasn't wearing his iconic green tunic and potential that Link could be a woman. Sadly, no female Link option was included in the final game, but Linkle, a female version of Link, was brought into Hyrule Warriors as DLC. It's difficult to tell how far in development this video was, but this doesn't appear to be an area in the final game. Death Mountain has a very different appearance, as does Hyrule Castle, and the overall layout of the land appears to be completely different from the final game. This footage would have to tire of the fans until December 6, 2014, where in-game footage was shown at the Game Awards. It was shown in the background of Miyamoto and Anuma playing it within a video, which wasn't the best way to showcase the game's first in-game footage. This is the first time we see in-game footage, including the full map and an area near this point in the final game. We were shown some horse combat, the slight automation of their movement, and the slow motion arrow attacks we saw in the original trailer for the game. Anuma mentions that you can eat food from trees, and Miyamoto talks a little bit about how the surrounding structures hint towards a dungeon being nearby. This hints that maybe more traditional dungeons were still in place at this point in development, something the final game didn't really have other than the four divine beasts and the shrines. Once again, Eiji Anuma is sure the game will release in 2015, a rather foolish thought. Despite confidence in a 2015 release for Nintendo, the game received its first delay on March 27th, 2015, something every fan was expecting, but hoped would never come. The harsher blow to this announcement, and one of the many nails in the Wii U's coffin, was that the game would not be shown at E3 2015. In fact, we wouldn't hear from the game until 11th of December 2015, where in a Nintendo Direct, we got a tiny glimpse of the game in action. After this, we heard nothing more until April 27th, 2016, where we were told that Zelda Wii U would be the only Nintendo game at Nintendo's E3 that year, and that it would also be coming to the Nintendo NX, now known as the Nintendo Switch, and that once again it was delayed until 2017. Finally, on June 14th, 2016, Nintendo fully showcased Zelda Wii U and revealed its full title, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Nintendo fully lifted the curtain on the game, showing hours and hours of live gameplay, all the game mechanics, amiibo functions and more. Amazingly, we were only shown the Great Plateau area of the game, a tiny part of the overall game map, but perfectly showcased the draw of the final game. Despite only having one game to show, and only 5% of it at that, Nintendo drew huge audiences to its E3 booth, and the game won multiple E3 awards. After this huge reveal, it was announced that Monolith, the developers of Xenoblade Chronicles, was announced to be co-working on the game, and hype towards the game reached new heights. But Nintendo had to show off their new console next. On October 20th, 2016, Nintendo revealed the Switch, and it was revealed, as we now know, as a portable home console hybrid, and new Zelda footage was shown in the trailer. Jumped to December 1st, 2016, and we got a new trailer for the game, showcasing more of the world outside the Great Plateau, some story elements, and some of the incredible music the game had to offer. Less than a week later, Nintendo showcased the Switch and Breath of the Wild on The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon, showcasing live footage of the game running on the Switch. Fast forward another month, and the day had finally arrived. January 13th, 2017, at Nintendo's Switch conference, Zelda got another trailer, and finally a release date of March 3rd, 2017, alongside the Nintendo Switch itself. The wait was almost over, with only seven weeks to go. Nintendo ramped up promotion for the game, with small trailers, interviews, and even Super Bowl trailers. DLC was announced, and despite a poor reaction at the time, it received positive feedback when it was released. Then, after upwards of four years of waiting and huge delays, the game released, and to one of the highest average review scores ever, receiving near perfect 10 out of 10s across the world. To this day, I've played over 120 hours, and a good 50 of those was in the first few weeks. The game deserves all the praise it gets, and with more DLC to come and some free updates, the game keeps you coming back for more. June 30th saw the release of the Master Mode DLC, and the Champions DLC is rumoured to be just around the corner with a December 2017 release. So, from its first inception at E3 2011, 
its reveal at E3 2014 and its full reveal at E3 2016, to its final release on March 3rd, 2017, it was nearly a six year wait. In between this time, we had six other Zelda games release, Wind Waker and Twilight Princess HD, Hyrule Warriors, Majora's Mask 3D, Link Between Worlds, and Triforce Heroes. But for one of the best games ever made, it was more than worth the wait. I wonder what the game would have been like if it did release in 2015. Would the Switch have been as popular at release? I don't imagine it would have. Either way, I'm glad of the delay, and I'm sure the wait for the next Zelda adventure will be worth every damn second. My daughter. Thank you all for watching, my name's Phil, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to see more hype history, check out this one I made about the Nintendo Switch. Until the next video guys, thank you for watching.